My name is Gum Gum. <laughs> I knew this was hell. <laughs> First official roll of the campaign, boys. Roll me an Arcana check, buddy -o. Oh my fucking god! Nat 20 plus 3. <laughs> no. 23! First fucking roll of this campaign. Oh, oh no dude. way. It's gonna be a fucking good one. My eyes are gonna roll back into my head. He's having a seizure! <laughs> Guts goes over and like cups the back of his head ready for him to fall. You're doing it all wrong. Kinda smacked in his doing? face a little bit. If somebody's having a seizure, you wanna put a piece of bark in their mouth. What the fuck? So they don't swallow their tongue. Oh, interesting here. tenacity trick there, my friend. Are you gonna <laughs> put the bark in his mouth? No, it's not my own. Bark. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Somebody catch me bark from a nearby tree. How dare you guys? That's disgusting. You said it. But don't you feel almost like you're a part of those trees as well? How dare you? Are you kind of beckoning them closer as they yeah, I'm, get Yeah, I'm moving? beckoning them, and I'm definitely showing off these big anime tits. Drop the gear. Fuck off. Can I, like, grab a javelin out of my Hello, house? fella. Calm down. <laughs> Let's do it. Just take a deep breath, buddy. We'll figure this out. <laughs> Four minus one. You don't want this on your cautious. And I fucking really this. <laughs> Does he even need to roll? Yeah. That guy's dead. <laughs> yes! Releases out of your hands at nearly mock speed. And with not even a bit of drop, just splinters through his chest and out the other side. It's a big blade, and as I'm sprinting and I'm gaining momentum, I'm hitting rocks every once in a while, and there's sparks flying from my greatsword. And as I come up and I and like right up next to him and I up slash. It cuts him right in half, right up the middle. This is a disgusting display of violence. Today we're doing a very special Halloween stream. We're gonna go one by one and reveal our costumes. <laughs> I'm the two-time back-to-back 1993-94 blockbuster <laughs> video game champion. What up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how do you? This is a Mr. I don't have any. No one you were saying you were gonna be hot as fuck, dude. <laughs> My headset's on under this bitch, too. Oh, hey! Oh. <laughs> He's a straight up dragon boy, dude. What's <laughs> happening? Oh, dude. Oh! Oh, oh god. god. This man. No, it's really it's Dark Bryce. Uh, uh, it's what Dark Bryce. Dark Bryce. <laughs> Are you guys ready? He's rectangular. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ready. Boys. Let's go, daddy. Tonight you call me mommy. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I did not expect that, dude. And I'll flick my collar out, prepare myself, and I'll strut to the front of the the party here and lead us through. Not so fast. Call me a deception check. <laughs> Twelve. Something's up. Tell us why you're really here. I'm gonna run <laughs> away. <laughs> you fucking idiot. I cannot sustain damage. I'm gonna do it the run that like Captain Jack Sparrow does too. Like. Do you say you're leaving us, Tweet Boy? On the morning, I will leave for Plum Water. I don't agree with this stuff. Why do you want to go with him? You just met him. It is part of my duty as an inventor. But you could help us with your inventions, mate. Look what you've done for us already. Oh, could you? What am I supposed to do without you and your knowledge? Fucking bastard. Son of a bitch is fucking leaving. I've only just met you guys as well. And yet you will remain in my heart forever. And that is why I will do anything in my power once this job is finished to find you again. Don't leave us, Sap. We Look, need to know Sap. The only family I've ever had. Stay safe, my friend. And until we you meet again. Well. I hope this time it doesn't take us dying to meet once more. You better not fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> Is it normal to, like, you know, kill a bunch of people and then just, like, their friends forgive you and then ask them to, like, 
bury the people you killed? Absolutely not, mate. These people are out of their fucking moss. Chase is meta critiquing my DMing right now. It's the type of meta gaming I've never even heard of before. <laughs> I'm gonna make you make 15 characters in this fucking campaign. Don't you make me? <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a long campaign. <laughs>
plus three yeah. set winter clothes. So it was pretty fucking solid haul, honestly. Yeah. That's all in the uh, thing, Chase. And that's uh, that's where we left off here. Basically, you guys are standing around after having just looted these enemies. Uh, it's still probably only about midday right now. Uh, so you've got a bit of travel time ahead of you. Uh, make your way towards where you need to go. But the floor is officially yours. So just to be clear, to set the scene, we're in the woods right now. There's dead goblins and bugbears. Yeah, yeah, and you participated in the fight. I played your character, so you were there for all of it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's no actual much it. kills by you, though. You don't have to worry. It's okay. You did see before you started entering this sort of sparsely wooded area. You could see the Gold Spire Mountain sort of looming overhead in the distance. So you guys know you are making progress. Yes, and we did have a terrain change as well. We weren't in the woods until just recently. Um, and it's a pine forest. Yeah. The climate's starting to get a little bit cooler. Oh, that's a heavy breath in the microphone. <laughs> it was right when I said it was right when I said the weather changed, though. <laughs> the wind came in, dude. Uh. <laughs> all right. Well, that's enough for me. It's all to you guys. All right. Um, I'm I'm still charred and maybe like smoking a little bit, and I'm just like sat by this bush like breathing heavy kind of just like in shock kind of disappointed in myself hanging my head kind of low are you alright Oreo I'm just just happy I didn't injure any of you I healed him up up. I I healed him up I healed him up pretty well that did not go to plan that's alright Why is it that uh, every time we hit the road, we get ambushed by some of these fuckers? This world's a lot more fucked up than I thought, man. Yeah, you know, from where I'm from, it's really fucked up, and I thought coming here would be a little bit better. It's all the same. It's all the fucking same. It's all the fucking same. We should, uh, we should get moving. I agree. We're all alive. That's a plus. Well, to yeah. be honest, I kind of blacked out in that fight. How long have we been traveling today? Your voice is a bit different, too. I think today is day three. Day Fuck. three. Yeah. Been a couple. Wow, what time is it? It's about midday, mate. Can't you yeah. fucking see it? Uh, hey, look around, mate. Look at the yeah, sun sorry. directly I above must us. Have bu- I must have bumped my head or something. Yeah. It's all right. Well, I guess we got a few hours of traveling ahead of us. So we should probably get going. Yeah, we should head towards those mountains. We got to get over them. I'm going to reach my hand out to Gabriel. First, for a pick me up. Yes. <sighs> Thanks, brother. Hey, you're welcome. No, oh, but uh, my, my healing has been exhausted. Uh, so... Uh, before we can rest, make sure not to injure yourself further. Or get injured, I should say. Yeah. Just that, man. Be, be careful, Oriel. We need you. Sometimes this magic does what it does, mate. Hey, we understand. Controlling this shit. We all have your back, so don't worry about it. Where's everybody at right now? Is everybody okay? A couple bumps, a couple scrapes. I'm feeling pretty magnificent after killing that bug bear. Did char the fuck out of my robes, though. I'm fine. (laughs) Fine. Casper? Hi, you know, besides for bumping my head, I think I'm all right. Not gonna lie, I'm still pretty fucked up, man. Um, Daddy, these, uh... These winter clothes, is this something that would be um, too warm for the current climate? No, the weather is changing a little bit. It's it's getting colder. Uh, It's not to the point where you guys are shaking and shivering. There's not snow falling or anything like that. But uh, as you guys are heading closer to the mountain, the climate is definitely starting to change. We're about to rise in altitude. You guys mind giving me like four or five minutes so I can get... Get changed out of these fucked up rags. 
problem, bud. Right, I'm gonna use cure beautiful. wounds. Beautiful. He's pretty uh, full already. As I slip on myself. Off my... oh, okay. Daddy, as I slip off my uh, my leather um, adornments over my uh, over these charred robes, um, and start to take them off and pull out this winter clothing. What does it look like as I put it on? Yeah. Uh, so it's sort of a it's sort of similar to what you were wearing it's sort of this long robe uh, almost like a trench coat type of material uh, it's like a thicker um, cotton spun sort of material uh, across the chest with buttons that are those sort of like those long cylindrical wooden buttons that, that snap through uh, like peacoat style almost <clears throat> and uh, yeah on the on the cuffs and around the hood there's just sort of this like really poofy kind of like hair um uh i i meant hair is in the rabbit but i realized it it kind of got uh twisted there um yeah it's like like rabbit fur um or hair fur that's fire dude hell yeah Yeah. cool yeah and i'll slip my uh my leather straps and pockets and my little uh shoulder piece back on and all right all right boys hey Let's, uh, uh, let's get moving Gabriel. Yeah. Hey, uh, you guys get cold? Being lizard. Well, yeah, I am cold-blooded, as I guess you could say, but it, it does take pretty extreme temperatures for me to succumb to coldness. So you be all right out in the mountain, you're not? Uh, I'll be all right. You, you should definitely take the other uh, warm clothing. I think... Uh, me and Aaron are going to be just fine. Right. Yeah, guys, we could probably that. chop this one up, mate, and make it your size, if you'd like. I'm fine. And I'll try to, like, find a scarf and some gloves that I can wrap around. Yeah, I'll toss them a couple pieces off this winter clothing set. Yeah, you've got, like, a, a pair of mittens, uh that are sort of like this light gray color uh, and sort of a similar uh, type of fur, maybe from a smaller animal around the cuffs of it. Uh, They're warm on the inside uh, and they they fit you pretty well. They came off of a human that was sitting on the ground. Um, The the scarf itself is kind of like this, almost like this reddish cashmere, like kind of think like a a Gryffindor scarf, like sort of like cashmere with like that sort of checkered pattern on it. Fucking... <laughs> Definitely seems more like a Slytherin, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's head out, boys. What do you say? Yeah, let's do, let's it. do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna light a torch, even though it is midday. Um, I'm just feeling fucking torchy. As we start to walk. I'm going to send a message to Mr. Blackthorn. Mr. Blackthorn, from one elf to another, I'm going to need your help. I need to slip away for a second. Keep the boys distracted. How How should I distract them? Just talk loudly and point at things on the mountain and stuff. Now? Just as we walk, all right? I just need to slip away for a second. Okay, make a belching noise and I'll, I'll take that as my cue. All right, I knew I'd get down on you. Out. <laughs> Out. <laughs> Over. Over. Yeah. Hey. And it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you guys continue to walk through this forest, and this <clears throat> this path is really well beaten. Uh, you see marks of uh, of wooden wheels from wagons. You see horse hooves, and and all of this is just packed this dirt down in this very very hard packed, solidified road. Um, Dad, you get the idea. This too far. Yes, sir. I just don't want to like get too far from the scene. I'm gonna let out a belch. <laughs> Do it. And then as they walk forward and Blackthorn's talking, I'm going to try to just slip away a little further. Wow, those mountains over there sure are beautiful, everyone. 
Yeah. <laughs> Look at them. them. <laughs> They're very stunning. Wow. I just can't take my eyes off of them. <laughs> can can you guys? No, I mean we have to pay attention to the road and where we're walking. Just but... just savor this moment. Huh? This you're right, great, you're right. I'm gonna a stop, great view. Right. That's right. Just, it is a good view, man. Just beautiful. Oh. Wow. Beautiful. I just see a bunch of trees, but that's all right. <laughs> Here, hold on. Head. I'm going to pick up guts and put them like kind of on my shoulder. And you're going to see this beautiful view, man. You can't fuck yes. this. Yes. You let him put it right up on my shoulders. Oh, yeah. Like I'm completely locked in on these mountains trying to give him a good view. <laughs> yes. I start like putting my hands together like... <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> Such a good distraction. Easily enough, you manage to slip away um, a short distance to to get us some space to yourself. Okay, as we're like fifty feet away from the crime scene, I want to slip away like 10, 15 feet away from the pack, and then I want to misty step, uh, or teleport actually, because I don't misty step, I teleport. I'm going to teleport my full 30 feet back to the dead bodies. I want to scoop up a small goblin body and put it in my bag of holding. Yeah. Interesting. And you, they're dense little guys. So you wrestle with it for just a moment and you, you manage to get sort of one of the hands in and it, it starts to disappear up to its arm, up to its shoulder, and you just kind of have to cram the head and the rest of the body into it. And it just <laughs> disappears. My bag of holding is a fanny pack as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you're like stressing it down into it. And um, as, you're, as you're doing this, Casper, you notice the um, skull necklace that you wear start to vibrate a little bit oh. and it and it just kind of sh gives this sort of ominous shake um and then subsides and i kind of like get a chill down my spine i like shake it off and like Ugh. and then i'm gonna run 10 feet and then teleport back to the to the group great and behind them so you don't so they don't know that you hid yeah and then yeah. I'll just slowly like catch back up so it doesn't look like I was gone. Okay. Yeah, that, that'd be easy enough. They seem well distracted. I don't think there's anything I need to make you roll in this scenario. Um, but yeah, you, you teleport back and, and Oriel is still just kind of like, did you see that bird flying towards? <laughs> how big do you think that is? It's, it's so far away, but it looks tiny. But you know how distance does that to things. And, and he's just kind of carrying on for a moment. And, and Oriel, as you're sort of carrying on, you're sort of continually like kind of keeping an eye out. And, and you notice after a, a few moments, few minutes of this, that uh, you, you peek back and you see your dark haired um, shadow felian friend. Oh, yes. Well, uh, that was great. Um, shall we carry on? <laughs> That's good to me, man. I don't... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a backflip off of Aaron's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Owe me an acrobatics check. Oh, gosh. Guidance as he leaves. Nice. 13. Oh, plus one plus guidance. Right? Yep. Yeah. Why can't I find one? Triangle. Sixteen. I have five hundred dice, and none of them are D fours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you you uh, sort of uh, sitting on his shoulder, and manage to scramble up, kind of kicking him in the shoulders in the face for a second before you get your feet both planted on his shoulders and launch this graceful looking backflip and halfway through it, it looks like you're just about to not commit all the way and you freeze for just a moment before you tuck your knees and roll the rest of the way into the backflip and land on your feet. Easy. <laughs> that was amazing. It's a good thing he gave you guidance because 13 would not have done it. I know, right? Uh, nice one. <laughs> Such a fucking beast, Gus. I'm just gonna reach my fist out and fucking wink at Guts as he lands. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Space, man. 
Six foot. <laughs> All right. All right, Daddy well, James. Is Please there? In. Yeah. Is there any uh, weird things like animal life? Yeah, uh, I want to take a perception on roll on that shit too. Go ahead and make nature checks, both of you, if you guys are looking around for any kind of animal yeah. life. Yeah, I'd like to be leading the pack. Just a regal as fuck. Uh, I'm, uh, rabbit I, I, I'm gonna actually kind of like be right next to Oriel. I want to be literally like on its tail. After the first like instance where we just got in, I want to be a little bit closer to him now because I feel like I almost lost him. Yeah, and I'm feeling at home with this as uh, at level one, I used to like to stick with the big boys. Did anybody roll a nature for me? Yeah, yeah natural one. <laughs> yeah, so I rolled a 15 minus one, so 14. <clears throat> oh, um, yeah, mine's a, mine's, a, mine's a negative one, too, so... Zero. The first That's zero horrible. of the campaign. Fuck, dude. <laughs> uh, we need to like all have little dunce caps that we can wear when something like that happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. As you as you guys have been making your way through this forested area, you've noticed some small flocks of small birds, finches, blue jays, things things of that nature. Um, you've heard scrabblings of some small woodland creatures. You know tunneling through the underbrush and squirrels um, sort of squawking at each other on the arms of trees. But nothing that really sticks out as unusual. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. As you guys continue to walk along this sparsely wooded road, the sunlight filters in through these tall, slender pine trees, and it casts shadows across the, the floor beneath you. Um, <clears throat> the occasional shift of light breaks through the canopy and kind of illuminates these wildflowers and ferns that line the edges of the roads. Um, and you can feel that cold air, and it's, it's getting crisper as you guys walk closer and closer towards the mountain. Um, you guys get that scent of pine and, and and cedar that just sort of comes with the breeze through through the trees, kind of leaving the sound of this soft rustle of leaves. <clears throat> As the uh, the road continues, um, it starts to meander in different directions, not like a splitting path, but it sort of meanders to the left in a, a gentle curve and kind of meanders back to the right. and. And you guys notice that as the, the road does that, the trees begin to grow a bit more condensed, a little more tightly packed. And it creates this sort of sense of enclosure, but it also piques your curiosity. The light of ahead shifts from this bright sunlight, these patches to a very soft, diffused sort of light that just barely peeks through the pine forest. Um, the trees themselves are getting larger as well. Uh, their trunks reaching towards the skyline. Um, this sort of transition from this open road into this dense forest is almost imperceptible to you guys. The trees gradually just start to crowd closer and closer and closer until you find yourselves enclosed in this, this world of green and foliage and the muffled sounds of creaking branches swaying in the soft wind. Um, <clears throat> the faint sounds of creatures uh, echo throughout the forest as well, creating this immersive soundscape of nature. Uh, in the distance, you hear the gentle <laughs> trills of birds and their melodies and songs weaving through the trees like music. Um, the rustling of small animals can be heard as they go about their business. Um... Time passes quickly for you, this leg of the journey. It it seems like midday transitions into sunset um, in the blink of an eye. And you guys, um, only once you take a, a moment to stop and think about that, does it really hit you like, oh, my legs are like getting sore. We've been walking for days now and you're hungry and thirsty 
Um, and the sun begins to set over this pine forest. And as you continue to walk deeper into this into this forest, the road completely disappears behind you. You guys begin weaving your way back and forth through these tall, towering, imposing trees. And as the day turns to night, you notice that some of this foliage becomes a little bit more pronounced. You see muscaria sized mushrooms and vines and leafy greenery that starts to cast this mesmerizing light that seems to dance with the movement of the wind, casting these greens and oranges and especially underneath the trees where the, the trunks meet the ground and they cast this shadow, you see that you're now in the midst of this bioluminescent land. You you come across all kinds of different otherworldly looking plant life. Uh, many different species of fungus, um, tons of different leafy greens and 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 ferns and vines that reach up between the trees and seem to connect them together. Oh, it's absolutely shit, beautiful boy. out here, mate. <laughs> kind of reminds me of home. This is what the Shadowfell looks like. Well, it's just like this, but without all the colors. Wow. So no, not not really at all. I mean, it's kind of the same in a way. <laughs> it's beautiful in its own way. <laughs> Sounds miserable. Oriel. What? Mate, come on, man. Gloomy and my, dark. It's my home. You're reminded man. of a fucking home, man. Oh, yeah, so, sorry, Casper. All right, Blackthorn. Hey, uh, speaking of home, it seemed like uh, Milanis, Milanis talks, uh, tonics. You remember her? Yeah. Uh, Elven woman. Yeah, she seemed like she uh, she knew you, or heard of you, or was familiar with where you're from. Well, yes. A lot of people recognize the name Blackthorn. Didn't know it reached quite this far, but it seems our reputation precedes us. What uh what are you known for? I've never heard you didn't travel as far as the shadow fell, I'm sorry. Well uh I'm of a noble house, I'm I'm the heir to the throne, Blackthorn. Well, I was. Your family is a uh, politicians, or are they rich, or do they rule a kingdom? Tell us they about rule. it. They rule the kingdom. You ever heard of the uh, Sunfire Citadel? I sure haven't. It's my home, mate. Right? Sunfire Citadel. It sounds uh, a very unique place. It's beautiful. Are you guys, uh, are you good rulers or are you guys fair to your people? I'd like to think so. I, I can't say that I've really spent a lot of time with the people of my city, uh, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, that's a shame. I, uh, spent a lot of time in my own world there. And I, looking back on my old life, I, I regret a lot of my choices. I brought great shame to my house. I was never uh, really accepted for who I am. Well, it's a good thing you got a second chance, huh, buddy? We'll see how good of a thing it turns out to be, mate. Am I hearing this conversation too? 
like while I'm with them? Um, totally up to the two of them. I think, uh, did you guys just start talking about this or did you sort of step ahead of the pack or? No, we're in front of everyone. Yeah, I think I'm still leading next to Aaron. I'm sure he hears all of it. Okay. And and Aaron and Gabriel, um, you two would know of the Sunfire Citadel. It's the, the closest, and I say this forgivingly, it's the closest city to um, Bloodstone that that there's, there is. I mean, it's a couple day journey, but it's the closest major city near you guys. So, um, so you know of the Sunfire Citadel. I kind of want to like join in for a second and just say, um, you're talking about shame. And I, I feel like I level on that on a whole, a whole nother wave, mate. And, um, when I was killed in front of my family, I think that was the most shame that anyone could have brought to me. Hey, uh, Mr. Cross, it's not shameful to die. It's not shameful to die. Trust me. Shameful if you weren't fighting back and trying to protect your family, but sounds like you did the best you could. I'd like to say the same, but when I bled out, I watched every single one of them get dragged out of the house as they screamed in terror. And I couldn't fucking do a damn thing to stop it. Well, like I told Mr. Blackthorn, it's a good thing we all got a second chance. Maybe there's room to right those wrongs. That might be. And with a band of fellas like us, we can take on anyone. We've already killed one sin. <laughs> What's Catch another? The boys, am I right? <laughs> What's the fuck another? Casper? Are you familiar with shame? Uh, I've seen it a time or two. I don't mean to be uh, so self-righteous, but... I kind of feel like I've always chosen the right path. But you died, mate. I died for, uh... I died for what was right, Mr. Blackthorn. And I'd gladly die again. Respect. I was sticking up for my people and... Showing them a path that they've been, uh... They've been wrong about this whole time. I don't know if you know anything about the Shattered Kai, but they're not known for being uh, righteous or good people. I'm kind of an outlier. The humblest of the group, but also I'm the good one. Seemed good to me. And, uh, we all have goals here. We're all on different paths, but I'm glad that ours crossed. Hey, and I'll nudge Aaron Cross. <laughs> hey, uh, Aaron. Yeah, Mike. Do you know of my people in my home? People, where are you from? Yeah, the Sunfire Citadel. Have you heard of it? Um, it's a half mate. It's actually quite close to Bloodstone there. Casper was asking if we were fair to our people. And I never really thought of that before until now. And did, did we seem fair to our people? You heard tellings of any cruelty? Daddy. Can I make a history check? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this is what I'll give you before I have you to roll a history check. Is that you would know 
that the neighboring city tiers, the Sunfire Citadel, um, is one of the largest of these main seven cities that make up uh, Kirfalar. It's a port city, and it, it lies inside of this um, bay where most of the overseas commerce arrives and leaves through. It has a thriving economy, and um, there's a lot in the city to see and to do, and there's a lot of sort of a historical national um, presence to it. Now go ahead and make me your history check. Oh my god, minus one. Jesus Christ. 18, 19 minus one. Oh, shit. Okay. I thought it was about to be another zero again when yeah, you said, oh my too. god, minus one. <laughs> no, I, like, I was happy about the roll. I was just like, hey, where are we at? Um, yeah, I mean, you would, you would know that like in any kingdom, there's controversy on the way that rulers um, lead their people. Um, but you would also know that the people of the Sunfire Citadel are typically treated well, and um, there's not like a super huge separation of classes there. There's it's one of those places where there's a job for everyone, and everybody sort of has their mark and their place that fills in the gaps, um, so to speak, in this city. Well, oh, real. If I were to say one thing about it, your city may seem to. Um, there was a thriving economy. I don't know. It's hard to um, imagine a place where if there's people that have something to enjoy that you could have been wrong to them. I gotta say, I never really thought of the people of my city a single time. I don't think it matters about the people in your city. It's about how you live your life in your city. It's about everybody and their own choices. It's about every single walk of life. Everyone fits and fills a position. And to be honest, I've, I feel like the Sunfire and the place where I'm from, Bloodstone, are one and the same. Hi, right, mate. Thank you, Aaron. You didn't do anything wrong, Oriel. If that's what you're thinking. I close my eyes and relive my final moments watching a fireball hurl towards the uh, the side of this coliseum-like place where I was putting on a performance and. Uh, where this fireball is headed is my immediate family, the king, and others that I love um, right before I lose consciousness. Um, knowing that I probably did do something really wrong, but I'm just going to keep that all in my head. Yeah, and as you're ruminating on this darkness in your history, um, your environment matches it. The sun completely set at this point and dusk wanes into complete and utter darkness from above, which only has the effect that it causes these bioluminescent plants to grow, um, or not to grow, but for their glow to intensify. Um, it transforms this pine forest into this this otherworldly planet it it seems to come alive with this soft radiant energy that that casts its glow upon everything it touches um the nocturnal creatures become much more active uh, their calls and chirps 
cut through the stillness of night, and each sound adds to this enchanting tapestry of forest, uh, creating a symphony that seems to echo through the trees and bounce off of forest's natural cathedrals. The air thickens with a dampness that's almost palpable. Um, And you come across this sort of slow-moving, babbling brook. Um, Around this brook, you see a ton of this plant life that you've never seen before. Um, And there's a, a, a serenity here, but just also this this feeling of wonder, this this is something that none of you have seen before. Um, with the light from my torch, can I pull out that one page that I got from the uh, alchemist lady, um, Alanis, and maybe read up and see if there's anything like collecting or would I know any information on collecting plants like this for, for potions? I'm sending you something right now because I finally put something together for you or found something for you rather than just trying to off the dome all this. That's um, cool. Yeah, you guys just see me uh, pull out this slip of paper and start to, to read it with my torchlight as we continue walking through this. Uh, we, uh... We planning on traveling through the night or you guys want to settle down? I think we should rest. Agreed. I agree. Let's uh let's keep it on the ground this time. As okay. A, you said a babbling what? A babbling brook. It's like a slow moving creek. That's really yeah. shallow. It just barely runs over the rocks that make up the, the bed of the creek. Should we uh, cross the creek now or do it first in the morning? We can do it now. I'm just worried there uh, might be something waiting on the other side. I feel like animals tend to congregate near water. Well, we can set up wherever you guys want. I'll, uh, I'll keep first watch again. No big deal. As everyone's gathering um, supplies for this rest we're going to take, um, I'd like to just peruse the campsite area and collect some of this bioluminescence, um, this plant life, and maybe some of the fungus you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, you make your way around sort of investigating this plant life and looking into like one mushroom in in particular you you're drawn to it's got this um almost cantaloupe sized cap on it with a really thick stocky stem and they grow in these bunches and they they have this orange top that just seems to just glow in this orange bright color um, whereas the white spots on it uh, don't glow at all. Wow. Um, and you take your knife and you run it through the meat of the mushroom and it cuts through it like butter. Um, and you're able to stow away some of that, but you notice as, as you cut it and it separates from the rest of the mushroom, that glow disappears. Hmm. Okay, interesting. I'll make note of that. I'll uh, actually... As I collect these, I'm going to have a separate area in my um, my drawings notebook, and I'm going to do a little sketch of this, um, this sample in its original form and write down some notes on how it looked and that effect that just took place as I took a sample. Yeah. Um, and you, you go to another larger, taller, skinnier, sort of fungus it's it's another type of mushroom that that seems to climb up the side of the tree and this this stem sort of reaches up towards the trunk before these these heads of this mushroom just start to slowly wrap around the trunk of the tree and as you go to touch that mushroom you touch it and it turns invisible 
Ooh. And you can still feel it, but it disappears from sight. Fancy. Well, I'll try and make a, a slice off that one too. Yeah, and you do. And and when you do, in similar effect to the previous one, you, you cut your blade into the, the meat of this mushroom and its invi- invisibility effect um, ends. It's, it's, its form reappears with a large sort of slice chopped out of it. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Right on. Um, stow those away in like little glass vials from my alchemy kit and uh, return to the to the campsite. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then there's all kinds of what looks like to be, you know, herbs and, and all sorts of stuff around this area. So if there's any time you want to do more of that, just let me know and I'll have you uh, I'll have you roll for some stuff or, or not. I love it. <clears throat> all right. Uh, so are you guys traveling further or are you going to make camp up uh, sort of in where this this uh, sort of glade is next to this this brook? I like this spot. Yeah, I think we're going to make camp. Yeah. All right. Um, you guys start doing what you've um, come to grow quite accustomed to over these last few days. You you roll out your bed rolls on as flat of an area as you can find uh, or climb up a tree as you've done in previous sessions. Um, <laughs> You start to gather whatever firewood you can, and you guys piece together this sort of humble little campsite. Uh, you, you lay your bags out and maybe use them as pillows, whatever kind of flavor you want to put on it, you can, but um, the camp has been made. Oh. I'm going to uh, approach Gabriel. Hey, Aaron. Mate, you doing all right? Yeah. Doing okay. I, uh... have moments where I still hear the voices, and, uh... I just... I just want to get this over with. I want to find this wizard and... get whatever it is in my head out. Does it still bring pain to you, mate? As I over here. (laughs) It's... It's not painful, but uh, it's uh, quite annoying and uh, exhausting. It's been hard for me to sleep the last few nights, and I'm, I'm quite tired, and I'm ready for this to be over with. I'm going to hand him my father's flask. This might take a little bit of the edge off for tonight, mate. We'll get to it soon. I pop it open and take a big glug of that thing. Gah, gah. And pass it back and <laughs> brace uh, clip that. Brace clip that. <laughs> take it off. <laughs> take it off. Hand it back to him. Thanks, Aaron. I think uh, I think that's gonna help. One dragon born to another, he would have he would have appreciated it being used. It's been a while since I've taken that out. Well, thanks for saying that, Aaron. It means more than you could know. About that earth herb you had uh, the other night, Aaron, you have some of that stashed away still. Actually, I still do. What'd you call it? Um, Uh, uh, World's herb? Actually, I don't have a a name for it. It's the world's finest. It's the finest herb that you could get. Then pull out my pipe and just kind of pack it and pass it over to Oriel. I'm down to get a little crossed, Aaron. (laughs) <laughs> you keep making puns on Aaron Crawls <laughs> All seven <laughs> Oh nice Gabriel I want you to know mate The closer we get into this Citadel And the closer we get to Bloodstone We have some fucking wrongs to right mate I agree. As I as I uh, said before, I think uh, more than you know, Aaron. More than you know. Right. Maybe. We um, all... oh, sorry. Sorry. Maybe uh, we could actually talk about that someday here. 
feel like. Yeah. I think, uh... Once we get past this and I can get these fucking voices out of my head and, uh... Depending on where we go next, we could have a, a nice little chat and discuss lots of things. Trust me, mate. Uh, we're gonna get these voices out of your fucking head. Hey, boys! The, the, the Gabriel's still fucked up, mate. We ate the food. I know uh, that I'm fine. I hadn't really felt any of the side effects, but Gabe is... He's not feeling well, mate. hes He's got voices in his fucking head. I, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. I'm going to send a message to Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, Aaron, it's happening again. Hand me that flask. Hand me that flask, Aaron. Here you go, man. Take it. I'm going to grab him and hold him. <laughs> oh, God. It's been aged, man. It's going to be great. They're still happening. Oil, pass the pipe. And as I pass you the pipe, I'll blow out like a Gandalf fucking pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I rip it and I just am inhaling and inhaling and inhaling. And I blow it out and I go, <sighs> and it's just this huge cloud, literally creates a fucking cloud. Oh, what are the benefits of dragon lungs? And I passed the <laughs> pipe back to Aaron. Throwing it back. I hate you. Throwing it back. <laughs> Can I use minor illusion as he says dragon lungs and create like this dragon blowing out like smoke with the with the smoke? That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, you fucking hit. You you sort of swirl your finger in this incantation and and it takes hold of the smoke as it's exiting the lungs of, of Gabriel. And at first it's formless and you just see these recognizable shapes before all of a sudden bursts this sort of ancient Chinese style uh, artwork dragon. Yeah, in, in an attempt just to, uh, you know, lighten the mood a little bit. And as I'm sitting down, I go, see, told you, dragon lungs. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I lay down on my uh, roll out. It's a gift, uh, not a burden. You guys notice as the the nighttime has really began to settle that the temperature drop is a lot more than you're used to in the last few days of travel. Um, you're you're thankful that you found those warm clothing when you did, because a night like tonight would be. A, a rough night to try to sleep through without something a little bit warmer. Um, the fire, how how big is your guys' fire? I think if it's cold, it's probably pretty big. Yeah, no objections from that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and it. Yeah, never mind. No, go for it. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now my curiosity is peaked. <laughs> I'm a fire dragonborn. Yeah, you and you and Gabriel are are fine, and I, and I think Kobold's also yeah. it's being covered in fur, like they have a, a little bit more affinity to to cold temperatures more so than oh, it's a lizard, more so man. than Oriel and Casper would have. I'm um, big chilling. Big chillin'. <laughs> I'm not people, but I am big chillin'. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and if there's any more roleplay you guys would like to do before this, uh, this camp out happens, let me know. And also, are you guys planning on, like, taking watches? Are you all sort of yeah, I'm crashing out together? I'll low-key just take my four hours and just stay up the rest of the night and wait for everyone to awake. Yeah, I'll do the same. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna snore like a hog. We'll let we'll let uh guts take the first watch, and then me and Oreo can, after we're done, meditating, take the rest. Yeah. With that time too, I want to actually like. Can I take those like extra four hours and just like fuck around with alchemy and see if it gives me anything? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We'll get to that when you, when you get done with your meditation. 
Um, Guts, go ahead and roll me a d20. Five. Five. You sort of perched on your bedroll, keeping an eye and an ear out. Um, You hear all kinds of movement throughout this forest. Larger animals, smaller animals. You hear all kinds of interesting noises from these animals you've never heard before. Noises, noises that give you a, a bit of unease. Some <laughs> some some low rumbling <laughs> these these seem to draw near your camp but with the large fire you're keeping you get the sense that they're sticking away and your four hours of watch goes I'll uh I'll stoke it a little bit add some more firewood keep it going and yeah. I'll uh I'll leave uh two little potions by Aaron before I pass out Oh, two little regular HP potions okay because he keeps getting hurt yeah <laughs> That's a nice thing and calls him out. Oh. <laughs> so those backhanded compliments. <laughs> I'll uh Oriole. Yeah. I'll kind of yeah. come out of my, my weird trance. I'm going to sleep. All right, going man. to bed. Yeah, have a good rest. Uh thanks, brother. There's a lot of big shit around. Just be mindful. What are you hearing, things? Yeah, just a bunch of shit. I don't know. Big creatures, maybe. Heard that as I walk up and throw one more log on this fire. Good night. Jeez, brother. Just gonna put that... That bedroll will be relatively small, and I'll uh, put it up against a tree and just kind of, like, sit back. Not off. Yeah, and um, Oriel, you have this alchemy kit that um, Alanis gave you, and you pull out sort of this mortar and pestle and these these tubes and beakers, and um, you you start to sort of um, filter around with these different ingredients that you gathered today. You have this sort of this cap that you'd slice a chunk off of of that glowing orange mushroom. And as you start to press it into the mortar and pestle, and it slowly starts to um, turn into this pulp, it's it's liquidy. It's, it's not like super dry. It's got this viscousness to it. And as you start pressing this pulp into this um, mortar and pestle, it takes some time, but as you're refining this ingredient, it starts to glow orange again. And it feels really hot. Like heat is emanating from this um, from this mortar and pestle. And you, and you bottle it up and cork it. Um, and it, it, it maintains this very slight orange glow to it. And if there's anything else you would like to flavor that or do to that or test it, test it with or whatever. Um, hey, uh, let me know. Mr. Black, oh, what would you make? Um, I'll just I'll just do that and end it there and take a note of, you know, what just happened in my little like uh, Pokédex. And uh, I'll just be holding on to this little vial, like almost like a hand warmer, just enjoying this light warmth and glow from this ingredient. And uh, as Casper asked me that, I'll I'll hand over this little warmer, like I'd hand over a nice hot chocolate. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy this, man. Wow, what uh, what do you call it? I don't know what to call it. Do you want to name it? Oh, I mean, I didn't make it. I thought I it's thought just, maybe you knew what I, you were doing. Well, no, I'm just fucking around. It's it's that mushroom over there, and I'll point 
at this light orange glow in the distance from where I collected this and um, over there man, I found these, this cluster of mushrooms and I took a sample I just, you're, I just uh, ground it up you're not planning on space. drinking there right oh absolutely not I think it's radioactive oh okay yeah it doesn't look safe at all you feel the, feel the warmth from it do you think it's like rather oh, interesting. it's hot yeah it is very interesting you gonna throw it at someone I kind of just like the glow of it. It just looks right. nice. That's pretty cool. For a cold night like this, it's kind of coming in handy. I'm proud of you. Made Thanks, Casper. Yeah, Thanks, man. man. Of course. Damn. Yeah, I was just, I was just fucking around. Yeah, I mean, you're talented. I'm gonna, wow. I'm gonna go back to read my book, though. All right. If oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, enjoy your, enjoy your book. I'll just. Just sit over here by the campfire. Yeah, if you're gonna blow anything up, just do it away from the camp, all right? I could do that, Casper. All right. En enjoy your book. Thank you. I'll just clutch this, uh, this vial into the fire as I enjoy the warmth on my hands. I'll add a occasional log. And I'm gonna bust open the first wizard's last stand again and try to get through more chapters yeah yeah and you you remember leaving off having started this story of of this wizard from a high nobility um in ancient days and and you skim through and read a bit and it it touches on the creation of magic and the creation of the weave um, and the original deity of magic, Mistral. Um, how she was created in this battle between two deities, Saloon and Shar, and was key in providing balance to this ongoing conflict. Um, her being created is what made the weave and this sort of ethereal layer that pervaded all space and and you find yourself just flipping through these pages and it it's interesting to you and um i don't think that's anything that you had ever i mean unless that's background of your character that i'm this is nothing that you were ever really taught um you get to this portion of the book um that mentions an arcanist named Carsus. K-A-R-S-U-S uh, um, and how he proved uh, to be more powerful than he could really control casting this spell called Karsus's Avatar um, it, it caused uh, disturbance in the weave and how Mistral had to sacrifice herself to save the weave um as she was reborn into um, um, or how Mistral had to sacrifice herself for the weave and how she was born into Mistra, her reincarnate. Mm. Um, so it's just going through a bit of history about magic at this point in the book oh, and, yeah, and adding backstory to what may become the first wizard's last stand. Um, as you were reading and an Oriole sort of dilly dallying by the fire, um, both of you roll me, both of you roll me a d20. Fucking dilly dallying, bro. I'm stuck in this fire. Ooh, ooh, not 20. Okay, okay. Let me roll my weighted dice. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, bust that thing on you. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, fuck. I roll a four. <laughs> 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 As you're sort of stoking this fire and and Casper is just lost in this book, flipping pages so, so quickly, it's like he's speed reading through it. Um, you're you're sitting there sort of fumbling this warm vial of, of pulpated mushroom juice that you were able to bottle up and it's warming your hands and you hear this rustle through the leaves behind a tree in the distance. And in this glow and these greens and these cool colors, these blues and purples of these 
bioluminescent fungi and all kinds of plant life. A moment later, you see this absolutely gorgeous woman. She's maybe in her mid twenties, and she's Casper or Blackthorn. Uh, Blackthorn does, and she's almost completely naked. She's got these piercing green eyes and this full lashes and this picturesque face with long, dark green hair that flows down over her slender figure. And it covers the curves of her body um, in sort of a enticing way. And she's got this sort of choker collar made out of these vines and plant life and precious looking metals. Her, an ivy, dude. Her, her toned stomach leads down to this really tightly wrapped skirt-like garment made from similar vines and plants that cover her just from her waist to about mid-thigh. And she looks at you and winks and blows you a kiss. And go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, 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 oh shit. Plus one, plus one. Say, oh yeah, to the Kool-Aid man. Oh yeah. I roll on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You That's a two. You feel like this, this punch drunk flushness rush over your face. Yeah, I'm enamored by her. And your, your eyes just almost bulge out of your head. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. And you get, you just, you are encapsulated by this woman. And yeah. just as you are really enamored by this moment, she turns and giggles and playfully sort of puts her hand along the tree and walks away in the distance. And you have this urge to just, you've got to go, you've got to go figure out what that's all about. I look over at Casper and he's poindexter as fuck in his book right now, just nose deep. And uh, I slip this little orange vial into my pocket and follow after this forest baddie. Casper, roll me a perception check. Yes, sir. Uh, 22. You hear this, like I said, he's just almost like punch drunk. Like you hear this sort of fumbling as he he quickly tries to stash this vial in his pouch and, and he gets up and you hear this scuffle in the dirt around you and, and you see um, you see Oriole getting up with just drooling and quickly heading off into the distance into the forest. Yeah, I'll uh, stand up and kind of do a look around and Tuck my book in my my bag of holding and just uh try to see what Blackthorn's doing, but not like interfere with his business. Oh shit! I want to I got... give him space to like do his own thing because I don't I don't see the girl, so I just think he's like going for a piss or something. Well, I got good. Are you trying to watch me piss? <laughs> what the well, fuck? I see you. <laughs> I see you off in the woods, and I'm like, oh, he's going a little far, so I'm gonna check oh, in on him. Shit. <laughs> Damn. <all right. laughs> he was about to say, oh, I have goosebumps, and your comment cut his ass off so hard. He was like, skirt? Wait, hold up a second. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All I'm right, just checking cool. on the homie, but like giving him space, you know. Yeah, I don't notice him at all. I'm I'm kind of like rushing through this brush and almost like, you know, feverishly like running after her like I'm a fucking animal, dude. So I'm not running though. I'm I am briskly walking though. I'm trying to follow. Yeah, him. you're you're not like in a dead sprint. Like it's no. it's it's obvious enough to Casper that he's like something's like a little off here, but I'm gonna just keep an eye out. And as you're you're following about 10, 15 feet behind Oriole, you see he's brushing through this plant life and you see these spores poof, in this glow and he's disturbing this plant life. And you see him touch another tree as he's brushing past and the entire trunk of the tree that's covered in these mushrooms immediately turns invisible. And, and in the distance, about 
40 or 50 feet ahead of uh, Oriole, you see the backside of this almost lightly glowing, um, stunning woman figure in the distance. And her her skirt-like material is just just short of where her, her hair falls so low on her back. And, and you just see these beautiful legs and this dark green hair. Uh, and you see Oriole chasing after this woman. I'm going to keep following. Yeah. And this scene continues to play out like this for a minute or two. And, and she's sort of playfully running her hands along this plant life and causing these these shockwaves of light to ripple through this forest that it's interacting with. Yeah. Do you still <laughs> see the do you still see the light of camp? Does Casper? Do just if I were to turn around, would I would I see you you're not even that's not a thought in your mind at all. Camp is the last thing on your mind right now. Um and as you guys follow her, this this thick forest, the, all these beautiful plants begins to open up into this very circular um, sort of glade within the forest. And it's... I, I think Casper starts to realize that we're, like, getting pretty far from camp, and he has to make that, like, split decision to, like... He's, like, looking back, and he can't see the fire anymore, and he's looking forward, and he th- sees Blackthorn running after, and he doesn't know whether or not he should go get the boys, or keep going for Blackthorn, doesn't want him to get lost, and... I'm going to look back at camp and just shake it off and keep going for Blackthorn. I don't want to leave him behind. Note that I'm not running yet. You could catch up to me. I'm swiftly walking towards him. Yeah. Are you trying to gain on him or are you trying to maintain the same distance you've kept? Um, the same distance. Okay. I want to see it play out. This glade opens up in this this dense pine forest and in the center of this sort of circular area, you see these extremely large mushrooms, these this fungus that's like king size beds almost that just float up from the ground on their their stalks. Um, there's this very entrancing um this very entrancing idea like going into this like this very beautiful woman leads and you see these large pillowy fungus of all different colors that are still casting this glow um that you guys have kind of gotten to become a little bit used to being in this forest um do you well Oriel immediately steps forth into this glade after this this woman, and she's she's now waiting, sitting up against these mushrooms, and her her figure is just lined by this hair that that dr- drifts down her body, uh, and see, you can can I see the woman yet? You can, and you okay. see just like Oriel had seen this very picturesque, like How absolutely beautiful woman. Oriel. That door. What are you doing? Do you touch me? He just points his finger. It's a message in your mind. Oh, okay. So I do hear it. And I'll kind of snap out of this trance-like state and uh, look around and... Casper. Well, you don't snap out of the trance-like state, but you do hear him and you are able to answer, but you're still enamored by this this woman. Casper. Leave, Leave me be. Blackthorn, I don't think this is a good idea. What is it, Casper? I don't think she's real, Blackthorn. You see her too? I see her. Look at her, Casper. She's she's beautiful, I agree, Blackthorn, but it's a random girl in the the forest. I don't think it's good to follow. She wants me to come to her. I'm going to continue to walk forward. Slowly. At this point, I'll catch up with him. Yeah, and you both 
break out into this this forested glade and as you get nearer you can hear like these very playful like <laughs> like these little giggles and these huffs of this this woman laying there and how how far away do you get from her because this this area here is large it's probably a hundred feet across I'm gonna try to stop just... him grab yeah. on the shoulder like right as we break through into this circular area you're right at the tree line yeah blackthorn i think it's like the food that gabe ate it's all in your head you gotta let it go well what are you waiting for come here get over here oh my god am i persuaded at all by casper you're hearing him and am i persuaded at all by her you don't get this like this like blood rush that you like have to go to this woman but you are and you are amazed by her beauty and just this environment that complements her so well but yeah gabe uh oriel slowly starts to step forth and just Fuck. He pulls away from your shoulder just a little bit. Oh, shit. Dude, the thing about Caster, he's never been in a situation like this, dude. He doesn't know if there's, like, forest baddies running around. He's from the shadow. <laughs> dude. dude, this is the first baddie we've <laughs> seen, bro. Let's go. I, I'm I'm still fucking after this, dude. I'm gonna go oh, to her. Don't look me in the eyes. I, I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna continue walking. <laughs> hey. I have to force that dog. I'm slapping him. Hey, look <laughs> at me. Both a hit. <laughs> just like an unarmed strike. Yeah. Thirteen. You gotta beat it. Oh, eleven. And I dodge it. I dodge it and keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> Blackthorn, I've never encountered anything like this, but my instincts are telling me this is bad. And it's too late. He's nearing closer and closer to this this mysterious figure, and she beckons you in. And I'm gonna cast I can't armor on myself. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe I found such a handsome man in the middle of my Greenlock Grove. It must be my lucky day. Or is it mine? Well, we'll have to find out. Come here, sit. And I do. And Casper, this is playing out in front of you like like stop motion animation almost. It's like a dream. Like you see Oriole stepping in and he clasps her hand and kisses it and she pulls him to the side and has him sit next to her and runs her hand along his leg. That's what's trying to feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> she says, I see you have a friend over there. Should I should I head out, Blackthorn? Or Casper, come over. She's Oh, I don't I don't think about it. She's that. so nice, Casper. These these mushroom chairs are, are so comfortable. Black Dorm, I, I think we gotta go. Can I address her? Yeah, of course. Whatever you're doing to my friend, uh, I'm starting to not like it, and I prefer if you drop this trance you got over him. Trance? I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I'm. I'm just making new friends in my green lock. I and understand. what about you? You're quiet, you guys. Beautiful, but there's something nefarious happening here, and I don't like it. Well, don't be too quick to judge. And anyways, I've been keeping my eye on you, trudging through my forest, stepping wherever you please, making it's your home and it's not your home and 
as she says this, you see this white sort of thick webbing like material spread oh. through oh. the ground uh, in about a 30 foot circle from her. And it spreads and connects and you see there's these lines like webbing slowly making their way through the ground. And let me see if I can. Boop. It's not your home and it'll never be your home. You're making a fool out of me and my green lock in my forest, in my land. I'm a, you a need to be huge, dealt with a huge yell. Boy! And try to wake up the, the rest of the group. Yeah, it's going to be a relatively high DC. You guys had been walking for a couple minutes away from the camp. Everybody else roll me a perception check. Oh, oh fuck. fuck. Oh, fuck. That was the longest time I've been muted for a session, but that was so <laughs> dope. <laughs> this is fucking crazy, dude. Everybody will get their turn. <laughs> no, that was so dope. I got an 18. Ah, uh, ben, you're muted. I don't know if you said what your score was. 13. Can you hear, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Three. 14, a three, and an 18. 18. Oh. I thought he said 18. Never mind. Yeah. I got 13. Yeah. Thir okay, 13, four, and 18. Um, guts. You are leaned up against this tree and you're 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 dreaming of this journey that you're going on with your your crew and you hear this this noise in your dream this boys and it's coming from far away boys and then all of a sudden you snap to and you're awake and you hear casper's voice somewhere far in the distance um screaming Boys! One time loud, and it just rings and echoes through this forest. And you don't see Casper, and you don't see Oriel. But you can pick out the general direction where you heard the noise. Aaron, Gabriel, get the fuck up. <laughs> and I Wait. pop right up. Ah, fuck, mate. I was having a dream about something, mate. It was good, but... <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, Where's Casper and Oriel? Where are the guys that said they were going to be on watch? And you both take a look around and there's oh. a, ro a roaring fire, but no one to be seen. Oh, I'm going to no. scream out, Oriel! Casper! Just into the forest. And then do, do we now hear Casper screaming? Yeah, you guys hear okay. him screaming just a couple <laughs> times of so boys I and a help. I yeah. start I start sprinting towards the yeah. noise. Dead ass sprinting, leaving my camp, leaving everything there. Yeah, I start sprinting. Damn, Damn. you guys are awesome. I'm gonna be on all fours, just fucking. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Ooh. He's faster than us. He's faster. The first oh, okay. time you've hit all fours yet. <laughs> and Can I throw an attack at this lady. Yeah, you you don't know whether your voice pierced far enough through these trees and you have a decision to make at this moment. Are you going to continue to hear her her speak or are you going to just go straight into attack? No, she started to get real shady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to attack. Okay. Oriel's going to defend her. <laughs> no. So I'm going to do my 30 feet if I can. And how far is she away? We're gonna have to kill Oriel. No, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna cast uh, Ray of Sickness at second level. Okay. Roll me a hit, baby. Fourteen. Um, that does not hit. Fuck. 
and she she giggles. <laughs> Such simple arcana. I would never be phased by something like that. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> my friend. What do you think, sweetie? And she looks at Oriel, and Oriel's just kind of <laughs> nodding, like, in agreement. Yeah. Hold on, can I clarify what is happening to me right now? Um, Meta, you are under the effect of the charm spell. So you see her as basically this friendly acquaintance. And it is, it is an Not so friendly. I do want to note, thank you, Chase, that I have a uh, advantage against being charmed um, because of my elven blood. Too late. Yeah. R yeah well, roll me another one now. <laughs> <laughs> Meta. Meta. Mm, I don't have to. If everyone hates this, no, it's stop. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Roll. Seventeen. You're still charmed. Bitch! <laughs> no, let's keep me charmed. I like how this is going. I just wanted to say that because. You know, For future you. reference. Yeah, Chase yeah, I, think, I, to. I, I like the way it's going. You for I'm not a fan of retconning this kind of thing because no, I made it either. pretty you gotta obvious. Know your, you gotta know your character. Mother. I made it yeah, pretty yeah. obvious it's that true. this was a charm style situation. No, you're, you're right. You're, you're and right. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of like retconning situations and no, being like, okay, well, now let's do this. Um, um, so. Bryce, roll it back. Cut this out of the stream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody got another 40 minutes because we just killed a lot of time chasing a sexy bitch into the woods. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, we're going to just like shut down the stream and then start it back up again. Okay, you guys ready? Okay. Yep. Got it. Nothing ever happened. <laughs> Well, it's Monday, and welcome back to Attic. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thank you. I'm sorry I did that, but... No, you no. should just be for sorry for yourself. Stuff, for sure. <laughs> That's a big thing. Fuck, I didn't even think about that with a fucking elf, dude. Okay. Anyways, I need to know I'm my yell at her after she uh, was talking shit. We're gonna burn down this entire forest if you don't let my friend go. <laughs> oh, shit. If you tried to do that, it would be a lot more than just myself you'd have to deal with. Oh my god. Believe me, and you see this... These hands just press down where she's sitting, and you see these this bluish glow escape into the mushroom, and you see these these white strands of mycelium slowly start to grow, and the floor around you becomes surrounded with them. We're fucked. We're and fucked. <laughs> sprouting up from these different thicker intersection points of this web of mycelium, you see these myconoids, these mushroom people um, start to grow out and take form and you see some of them are larger than others and some of them are smaller and some of them have these like hardened white mycelioid style weaponry and, and armor and, and others that that don't have any weaponry. Damn. And at this that. point, I'm going to need Casper and Oriel to roll me initiative. Where are He's me, Gabe, sexy. and Gunn? Yeah, where are we? Where are we? You guys are probably two rounds of combat out from getting there. Uh, they walked for, they walked for a couple minutes. Um, and We're sprinting. And you guys didn't didn't get the jump on him from it. That's so bad, boys. I'm rolling so bad. low. <laughs> no, nope. I love this. Uh, I got 14. You guys are doing perfect. Thanks, babe. <laughs> They're in the dark root gardens, boys. First kill for Casper coming. Uh, yes! Uh, if you kill my forest first daddy, death. Casper! Casper! <laughs> 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 if you kill my forest daddy! The end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Your first kill is my forest baddie, dude? Fuck! Dude, I hope so. I like how she's just marked as sexy lady on Apple. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought you guys yeah, would like so that. Great. Can we do a quick audible and change it to forest baddie? 
Forest Birdie. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Chase. Coming in. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> God, I'm not. I'd like to take really another good, audible too. and make that B B A D D I E. Yeah. Oh, chill. <laughs> Heart emoji. Your wish is my command. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, let, me, let me keep fucking counting my initiative. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're gonna show up and me and Blackthorn are gonna be dead. We're just gonna be laying on the ground. Uh, that's so great, dude. We're fucked. Fuck. So fucked. Dude. But you got mage armor, so what does that pump you to? Leave it to a forest baddie to kill the whole party. Sorry, oh, I'm, I'm being so meta. Up. I'm being so meta, I'm sorry. God, you meta fuck, dude. I know, hey, you dude. little rat bastard, you threw me under the bus. You like, just <laughs> told me the elves are... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rap scallion, dude. You little fucker. You guys got this, okay? You got this. <laughs> okay. And one more goddamn roll here. Thank goodness. I was getting sick of that. Ooh, Can I say two, Tim? Holy fuck, man. Yeah, this is, man. Uh, this is I, wild. Dude, I got literal fucking goosebumps as I'm as immersed. As was going out. I'm fully immersed. It was so good. Well, I appreciate the compliments. We'll see how much you guys are thanking me when two of your party members are dead. We're <laughs> 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 trying to sugar you up, baby. Come on. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. Great. I make it better, bro. <laughs> Doing great, Tim. <laughs> Love you, bro. Love you, Dad. <laughs> Don't kill us, okay? <laughs> oh my... <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, um, this Mykonoid nearest to you, Casper. Oh god, my owlbear is not cooperating. See that? My pointer tool is not working! I see it. I see it. Mykonoid. Yeah, that one there. Um, that one immediately kind of turns its head towards you and starts running in an all-out sprint. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's going to take a dash action at you, um, and that's going to be the end of its turn. I'm gonna slam my quarterstaff on the ground. Put it on, you mushroom fuck. <laughs> Which is perfect segue into your turn and initiative. Yeah! Yeah, dude. And I'll frickin'. <laughs> I'll frickin', dude. As he's running at me, I'll, uh, Kylo Ren, dude, frickin'. Force choke, chilling touch. <laughs> there you go. It's actually so dope, what the fuck? I was cocked. Big cock. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting for <laughs> someone to say something. <laughs> oh, yeah. 23 to hit. Ooh, uh, damn, that definitely blue, hits. Oh, Such a that good group. Hits. Five damage. Yeah, and uh, your little skeletal chilling hand reaches out and grabs the arm of this Mykonoid. And you see these ice crystals start to migrate from the touch of the hand around this this myconoid arm. Um, yep, and uh, that is it for your turn. Or you got anything else, buddy? Uh, I'm gonna teleport away, as I do be doing. And as I teleport, just a quick second, let me read the rule. Um, I gain resistance to all damage until the start of my next turn. Okay. So all damage is halved. Halved. Interesting. Is that Profound. because of your teleportation? Yeah, I'm a shatter guy. Fuck. I'm shadow guy. Alrighty. Next up is going to be the forest baddie. And you see her... You see her, like... Just starting to get this, like, you know, like 
like pouty girl face. Like she gets this really pouty girl face and it it twists into these big doe eyes, into this angry scowl. And you see her green hair slowly shift to white and you see her forms shorten a little bit and her skin begin to turn green and her nose grows and gnarls forward and she's got this wrinkly hideous grotesque looking face and she <laughs> <You're> bad, <dude. laughs> am i watching this transformation like yep she's sitting next to you still uh you're even you are now frightened that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and she um she is going to just as she's running her hand along your leg you're gonna feel this piercing pain as she claws deep into your leg um oh pain. god i may have killed Coriel. <laughs> don't me like nine plus six is over 13. Oh. Oh, what heck. she's a plus six to her claw attack <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh my god this is gonna kill me another leg blow nine plus three damage well what damage. what <laughs> So 13 plus 12 or just nine plus three is 12 damage. Yeah, that was just a hit. Bro, that brings me to eight HP. Oh, good thing these, you guys stocked up on potions. These claws dig into my flesh so deep and you just hear me let out this guttural scream. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, you're screaming and you look at her. It's not your turn yet, but you immediately realize what's happening. This this wash of fear and like embarrassment rushes over you that you fell for this trick and you are no longer charmed because you took that damage. Is she grappling me? She is not. She just dug her claws in and sort of retracted them. And she's now um, sort of sitting next to you, takes a step back. Can I just, for like roleplay say, kind of fall off this fucking mushroom stump I'm on and just kind of like back away on the ground, like in fear from her, like cowering? Yes. Um, with that being said, she does take a step out of your melee range if you want to take an attack of opportunity, like try to kick her as you're scrambling or something like that. Um, just for roleplay's sake, I'm not going to. I'm completely like fucking taken aback and just shocked by what's happening and really fucking hurt. Okay. All right. Next up, we have a whole fucking swarm of myconoids. Uh, yeah. This one's going to jump down on off of this mushroom that's looming overhead and trying to just land on you, Oriole. Oh my god. Nat one, he misses and does three damage to itself. Yes. Dumb bitch. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> um so he gets rolling nat one. Fucking loser. This <laughs> one's going to take a dash action this way. And this one's going to take a dash action this way. Um and this one is going to take a dash action this way. Bring it on, mushroom. Um, actually, that would have been a little bit further for a dash. All right, next up is going to be you, Oriel. Um, wow. Um, as I'm just trembling in fear, kind of realities rushing back to me, uh, I'm going to cast a second level spell, Misty Step, and uh, I'm going to try and take, I believe it's 30 feet. I'm going to roll out all... I think Misty Step is 60. Oh, is it? Yeah, 60. Okay, perfect. I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of... Uh... Nope, it is 30, you're right. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna try and get hidden. I look to my left as I'm fucking crawling away, and I see this gap through these uh, huge mushrooms, and I'm going to... 
pop up on the other side and kind of continue my crawl backwards behind this stump and kind of gather myself. Okay. And that's going to do it me. You can take po- potions as a bonus action if you have any. Um, dude, fuck it. No, the Misty Step is a bonus action. Literally. Oh, that's true. So you do so have an action, action if you'd like. Um, you know what? Because I'm so low health, I will. Thank you, Aaron. I'm going to cast Invisibility on myself. My boy! He's a fucking stealthy man! <laughs> and there goes Blackthorn for the rest of the battle. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he'll come back. And at, at this moment, um, the rest of the party is just beginning to enter these woods. Um, I think Guts was first, followed up by Gabriel and um, Aaron. Go ahead and roll me initiative, you three. You got it, brother. 15. 12. Yeah. From, from Forrest Batty to Hideous Hag. <laughs> 15 was Aaron. Yep. 12 was uh, Gabriel. Right? That was me. Oh, 12 was Guts. Yeah. And 14. About you, Bucko. 14. 14. Nice. Okay. Um, back up at the top is going to be this Mykonoid here. And it's... How many times, by the way, can you teleport in one day, Casper? Uh, twice. Twice. Did you not use it twice to teleport away and then teleport back to... But we took a... Me and Oriel took our, our long... Oh, that's right. You did get your, your meditation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, this, this one here, seeing new combatants, is going to take a dash action in uh, and gets right in Guts' face, but does not have any action economy after that. Casper, um, your turn. And... I believe now that it's back to your turn, your damage immunity is worn off. Uh, yeah. It has. I am going to do something I haven't done yet. Since this, this, uh, Mykonoid is so close to me, I'm going to pull out the brand new whip that I bought. And I'm going to try to wrap it and yank it down towards the ground. Okay. I would think that's probably a strength check. Uh, I just wanted to flavor it. You don't have to say you went prone, but I was just going to go for a basic whip hit. Okay, yeah, that works. Uh, nine to hit. Nine to hit. That does not hit. Fuck. Do you got anything else? whip it, get it right around the neck, go to pull, and then it just, like, flexes on me. It's like, nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Rip a little spore off his neck. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's all I got. Okay. Next up in initiative order is Aaron. Fuck yeah. Alright. Um, the little Micah did right here next to Guts. I'm gonna run up to the right side and kind of just do this like, kind of spin motion and then just do this whole on full strike right to this mic in its head. And... Hold on, I gotta pull up my head, sorry. Oh, Bryce, you're killing this music, dude. All of the forest, all of everything is just perfect. It's beautiful. The 19. 19. I think that will hit, yeah, maybe. Think, yeah, no, maybe. <laughs> it's close. <sighs> All right, and we got six and a two, eight plus four. It's going to be 12 damage on the greatsword. 
or plus one d4 sorry one sec uh 16 damage okay when you hit it with this attack and you see these this just burst of these mushroom spores that clouds out the area for a second before petering out um, and it's disappeared and he now. takes yeah and it just disappears and you don't it doesn't give you an immediate effect or anything like that you don't know exactly what's going on that was how much damage okay. 12. it does that was 16 damage 16. yeah and he looks I'm... very very hurt okay um, you, you like lop off a section of its of its mushroom fungal like form and it just falls to the ground with a dull thud i actually i moved like it's 10 15 feet can i move forward more yeah you'll take an attack of opportunity from it okay because you'll good. be passing its uh range of attack yep good Fourteen plus two, sixteen. Oh my god, that hits. <laughs> Just hits. Six bludgeoning damage and three poison damage. So nine damage total. Yeah. And it, it just I reaches out with its arm. Diseased and plunges its arm into you and punches you with its fist. Yep. Um, and poison is not necessarily a disease. Okay. Like, it's just poison damage. You don't have the condition poisoned. Gotcha. Okay. That's my turn. Okay. Next up is the forest baddie, um, now known as the hideous hag. <laughs> um, she is going to... I'm gonna swell up and um Ooh, she's got a lot of stuff I can do here. Um You see her like mutter to herself for a second <laughs> and she immediately veils herself and is invisible. Oh my god. Fuck! Boris Batty. What have you done, Oriole? <laughs> <laughs> she did it to She's me, really bro. a hag. You should have seen her, at, dude. I had no chance, dude. <laughs> you should have seen her, dude. should have seen her, dude. <laughs> Bad. Hey, dog. Oh, uh, but he wrote that description out all by myself, you know, next smut author coming through. Yeah, that was some fanfic level go. shit, bro. That was, that was, so some, good. That was <laughs> some schmutt, dude. <laughs> uh, Gabriel is next. All right, I am gonna like continue my sprint because I was in a dead sprint. I'm gonna sprint about 15 or so. I'm gonna continue to sprint about 15 or so feet in front of me, and I'm gonna reach my head back, and you see my cheeks start to swell. And I come forward again, and I uh, use my dragon breath on this myconoid that's right next to Casper. Fucking watch it, dog. Super uh, fucking Dex. Uh, Dex DC twelve. Dex DC twelve. Your yours isn't a cone; it's like a straight line. Right? That's that's why I'm yeah. doing it. Yeah. 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 He's this got is a, a line. line. I'm a cone. Mine's a line. Otherwise, I wouldn't go for it, brother. All right, thanks, brother. What'd you say the DC was? Twelve. Twelve half damage on success. I'll save. Uh, um, dexterity is plus zero for this Myconid. Uh, so, ten plus zero, he fails. Aye. Okay. Get his ass. <laughs> Anyone up for some roasted mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> One liners, fuck. <laughs> Five. Eight damage. Right. Eight damage to Mike and it four. Yeah, and you see, you get, you actually get this aroma, um, Casper, as this Mike and it chars up a little bit. And it kind of, it kind of smells good. Thanks, Gabe. How much was that? Eight damage. Eight damage. 
I'll share this one as a roast when we're done. Finish him off, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be your first. <laughs> Some little boy. mushroom minion piece of shit. Right. Kill to kill, baby. <laughs> I mean, this Mykonoid here is going to run onto the outskirts with a full dash. Uh, next up is Guts. You've got a Mykonid right in your face that just got a nice chunk of it lopped off. All the veins in my body are just gonna fucking pop out. And uh, I'm gonna smile menacingly in rage. And I will attack this guy. I'll try and uh, I'll just slash to the body with uh, some red lightning and some booming energy, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Uh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Hell yeah, <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys is rolling. Oh, dude. Low roll. <laughs> Fuck, dude. And you kind of cut into him, and it's more resistance than you're expecting at first. It sends oh. that kind of ring through your arms, and you drop your weapon. No! Oh! Fuck! Worst Shit. that one ever. That'll be my turn. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> like hitting a shovel on the ground. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um This Mykonoid's gonna rush in and try to clobber Aaron. Yep. <laughs> Um, which, by the way, for the purposes of this, guys, you did not get your long rest. But if you wanted to use hit dice on a short rest, um, you can roll those now and um, um, save for Casper and Oriel. They got a full rest. But you guys, if you need to heal up, you can use your hit dice um, before you get too far into this. It would be great. Thanks, All Dad. All right. Um... Yeah, that's gonna hit. The last one was a 16 to hit. This one's a 16 plus two, so 18 yep. to hit. That hits. Oof. Four bludgeoning and. Come on, come on, roll um, low, baby. Four poison. Fuck. So no. Eight damage total. I'm gonna take a pretty serious hit here. Um, uh, not a bunch of blood coming out of me, but. Quite a bit. Next up is going to be Mykonoid 4, who is going to um, step in one step to be head to head against Casper here. And Casper, you see as he's swinging towards you, his fist is almost like this sharp point. Uh, and he's going to try to hit you with that. It's like a slashing attack. And he rolled a two plus two, so that misses. Um, last on my side of things here is going to be Mike and two, um, who is going to. Hmm. Yeah, they don't really got a whole lot of options, so he's just going to use a dash action to get around this side. What a loser! Fucking loser, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Oriel, speaking of pussies, is up next. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Ow, I'm going to hide oh, in the bushes. Dad that the hurt. Hurt. Um, okay. Hey, <laughs> daddy, clarifying question. This this little uh, diddly dad of large mushrooms that I'm in, I imagine there's, like, space to navigate in between these large mushrooms now, like, almost as, like, a tree yeah. top. Yeah, okay. is, those are just the caps of the mushrooms. You can kind of weave throughout the stems, and you have sight of the battle of what's going on most of it through it. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to weasel my way around here, still invisible, maintaining stealth. And uh, I'm going to use a bonus action to convert a sor sorcery point to another second level spell slot. And uh, on this myconoid number one... I'm gonna cast Witch Bolt 
at second level. This man has found the way. And unfortunately, I roll low. I'm using Tides of Chaos to roll out advantage. Hey, that's what that. I liked it. Dude, you were playing, bro. You were playing that sword. Holy fuck. And I roll low again for an 11 to hit a major waste of a lot of shit. No, or it I, would be. No, you try. Or it would be if their armor class wasn't 11. That does hit. Yes! Yes! yes. Um, you see, as I spin the sorcery point, you see this green energy come from the tip of my staff, pulse through the wood grain into my hand and into my chest. And as it does enter my chest, almost immediately this energy surges through my body again out the tip of this staff. And uh, I hit homeboy with, come on, come on, 11 damage. As nice. this crackling, oh shit, I'm sorry, not 11, 11 plus 10, 21 damage. Oh, green crackling energy surges from my staff and fucking attacks this motherfucker like Emperor Palpatine. I'm just roasting his mushroom ass. And his, his mycelial mushroom form, his bits just explode in this bolt of energy, this crackling purple wave of destruction. And that is where we're going to end today's episode. <laughs> hey, uh, another ooh. session, another dry spell of no kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, don't worry about it. Hey, you, you got worry. a heavily injured guy right in front of you. There's so much you can do here. It's gonna happen. Nobody touch my ceiling yeah. four. Don't worry about it, bro. <laughs> it's only been like it's only been like four months, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, I had a lot of fun with that one, guys. I was messaging you on Discord like, I think you guys are gonna like this one, so I hope you did. No, that was yeah. a good bro, bro. session. Bro, really descriptive. Bro, you had me immersed, man. Hey, oh, yeah, fuck. You I feel like I was in the movie of Avatar, bro. For real, I was getting that same bro. shit. I felt I I heard the the mushrooms and the bioluminescence shit, and I was like, yeah, Avatar. Um, yeah, yeah, bro, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, but just in like a really simple pine forest, you know? Yeah, like, dude, it's so sick. It's yeah. So transformed sick. in the darkness. Yeah, I, dude, every moment of this session I fucking loved. It was so. Love, it's getting better and better. Success. Well, it's thank you guys. It's getting better and better. Thank you, and uh, I, I love all the compliments, but we do need to wrap things up here. Uh, if there's anybody that's checking us out for the first time or someone that's stuck with us here for a little while, thank you so much for indulging our content and just and just staking, sticking here with us and hanging out with us. Uh, we have a lot of content to get through. This is going to be a, a seriously a, a long campaign, um, and we hope to have you for every step of the way. So thank you so much, and with that... We have Good been night, at everybody. advantage. Good night, everyone. Good night, Mark. Good night. Love you guys.